What You Doing Podcast. I'm the AC, and this podcast is going to be more topical in nature. But before I get to all that, I will let my guest co host introduce. Hey, I'm Caroline. That's all I got. <laughs> I like anime. <laughs> we're, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff, anyways. So that's a good enough introduction for now because we're going to get to know more about you and anime and conventions a lot in this podcast. But before we get to all that, let me introduce myself before that, just in case people are watching this podcast and don't know who I am. Like I said, I'm the AC. Right now, I'm ethnomusicology master student in Hawaii. But when I do not want to get settled down too far into the academics of my life, I like to relax by doing YouTube, doing this podcast, doing a lot of writing, gaming, watching a lot of anime, all kinds of otaku or nerd stuff. I also do something called Fight. But yes, I have been doing this podcast mainly to get back in touch with old friends, get better acquainted with people I know, and just talk about things we like, and just, you know, maybe promote or brag about the people I know, if I can. So, let's get started. Caroline, you like conventions, right? I do, yeah. Yeah, that's why I had you on here. So, yeah. um, ooh, where to even start with all this? Um, what kind of, uh, what kind of conventions as far as how many we're at have you been to? Well, I've been, let's see. Hmm. I went to my first convention in 2014. Very awkward high school senior, super weird. Um, but there's usually two like local ones that I'll go to every year. And I haven't been able to go to any out of state yet. I was kind of hoping to do that this year. Mm. Then everything caught on fire. So maybe next year I'll get to go to some that are existing, hopefully. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So, been a couple. Yeah, the two main ones. uh, My first one was MTAC. Yeah, Middle Tennessee Anime Convention. Um, That was... I always forget what year. I think it was 2017. Yeah, I think it was. I think I was supposed to be teaching when I went. But um, I plan on going to a lot before that. I just never did, never took the chance to go do it, especially where I live. It was a, it was a venture just to go to one. And mm-hmm. I, I was never keen on doing that kind of stuff by myself. Uh, I did. I would always meet people. Random people. Once I met a guy in GameStop and it was just like we were talking. We made plans to go to. It was probably MTAC. Uh, we planned all this stuff out. We were going to cosplay from like the Pokemon manga, yes. and then of course all that fell through. I don't remember. I can't remember if I was in high school or early college when I did all that. Um, but yeah, since then I've been to two more conventions out of Tennessee uh, because I live in Hawaii now. Um, there's one, Kawaii Con, which is awesome. And then mm-hmm. Honolulu Comic Con, which isn't just anime. It's all kinds of stuff, but it's pretty much mainly anime because this is Hawaii and there's a lot, there's a pretty big Japanese culture here. Mm-hmm. But yeah, oh man, it's it's been pretty dope. What's the, do you remember your favorite convention slash year you went hmm I think probably okay so there's MTAC that's usually in the spring that I'll go to which is the one you were talking about and that's the first one I ever went to that's like the big middle Tennessee one but actually um a guy who's a photographer like does a lot of cosplay photography in Tennessee he started a smaller one in the fall called a KaiCon well it's in like August and I think a KaiCon 20 18 was probably my favorite one. That's where I met this guy. Ah. So they have a lot of um, a lot of like guest cosplayers and stuff come to that one and you get to like interact and meet a lot of people. So ah. it's it's pretty cool. It's a lot less crowded than MTAC is. So that's that's really nice. I think. Yeah. Oh I'll, I'll probably before I get into the crowded versus crowded in my opinions on that, because I was thinking about this before we started. Mm-hmm. Um, back in, going back to my first convention was, I guess it was nice because we ran into each other, but also 
I guess the first time I actually remember talking, talking to you, besides me just being a random fool when I would run around the music building, uh, was because, oh, the name is blanking on me. Um, Scott, the Scott Pilgrim. Oh, uh, yeah, Ramona. Yeah, Ramona. Yeah. Yeah, I saw you doing that cosplay. And I was like, oh, this is a person I will actually like. Oh, my gosh. And- I... <laughs> All of the ones that I like cosplays I made while I was in school were so tragic because most of them were just I went to Goodwill like the week before the convention (laughs) and then grabbed everything I could and then I would like do my homework and then like make it at like 11 a.m. to like or 11 p.m. to like 3 a.m. the day of and then drive back to Nashville. (laughs) Oh, those were fun though, but yeah, need to redo Ramona. She was fun. Yeah, it was a good one too. I recognized it right away. Yeah, Goodwill, man. Yeah, I, ooh, we'll talk a lot more about cosplay later, but yeah, I just, <laughs> I suck at cosplay mainly because I'm lazy, but, um, so, oh man, it's hard to pick which one's my favorite since I've only been to three, but I do like Intact because it was, it was cool and it was my first experience. Also, it's because one of my face, face, one of my favorite uh, voice actresses is there, uh, Cassandra Lee Moore. She uh, voices cool. uh, Tyga and Toradora and a bunch of other voices uh, mm-hmm. that just happened to be some of my favorite characters for whatever she was in. And that was cool that she just happened to be there at my first one. So I remember that. Uh, then KawaiiCon here is awesome because it seems huge. They do it in the Honolulu Convention Center. Okay, that's awesome. And it's they do it right at the end of the year so it's right before all the students leave and Mm -hmm. that's important because honolulu honolulu comic con happens in the beginning of august usually and it's so sad um so yeah i remember impact being super crowded like even when we were just like trying to stand around talk we would always we would have to move out of the way of who knows who nobody was over there anyways they still use the Honolulu Comet, uh, Convention Center for Honolulu Comic Con. And it's so small and it just seems deserted almost. It seems like just random people wandered in the convention <laughs> center. And it's like still nice. It's just the all the students here are gone for the summer still. Mm-hmm. So they really should just like push it back a month or something and probably get more people. But yeah, still- I imagine that's hard to travel back for. <laughs> yeah. Being all the way in Hawaii. <laughs> Last year was um, nice because it happened right after I get got back from the Philippines on my first trip, and it was the day after my birthday. Oh, fun. Uh, yeah. Uh, which got me to uh, one of my favorite awkward moments, which was uh, the Dragon Prince cast was at this. Okay. And... Somebody asked the uh, the main antagonist voice actor. I can't remember his name, but the character is Varen. Have you seen Dragon Prince, any? Mm-mm, it's on my list, though. Yeah. I've heard it's, good things. Yeah, it's really good. I binged it um, when I knew they were coming. I just downloaded it all on my phone on Netflix and watched it on my trip. But anyways, um, somebody was asking him to sing a song, and he was trying to figure out what to sing. He's like, was it anyone's birthday? And it was dead silent. It was the day after my birthday. I was just like, mine, mine was yesterday. So you just like, we just stare at each other while he sings just to me like this operatic style happy birthday. And I was like, this is cool, but so awkward. I feel like that's kind of how you can describe most conventions is like, this is cool, but so awkward. It's like, I mean, you get a bunch of people. I mean, I guess, I guess you can be extroverted and go to conventions, but mostly you get a bunch of like timid people who then this is like their one one time to try to not be timid. It's <laughs> just, ooh, it's a time. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that definitely describes Honolulu Comic Con to a T. Pretty much every pan- panel, it was it was like a handful of people. And it was, mm-hmm. the, I like the panels a lot, but it would be like small enough to where the voice actor would be like, okay, everyone, let's just sit in a circle and talk to each other, which is cool. Um, Mm -hmm. but then it's like if you walk in on a session like that they're like hey you talk about yourself and what uh, I did that to a panel I was like dang I was just wasting time (laughs) until the next one uh okay and then it was cool it was 
what's his uh he uh, does a bunch of voices but we just started talking about like martian band stuff because i told him i nice. played drums and nice. in the middle of this panel just having a conversation so small conventions are cool i like that kind of stuff but when it's in a building that's too big it's awkward yeah 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 i could see that and, and like as uh inconvenient as it seems for it to be crowded i kind of miss that i kind of miss being around all those people i don't know yeah yeah i love um so at mtac let's see i've i've been i think four times now and two of those times me and my friends have brought like a, a hotel in the actual convention place just so much nicer um and i think like for mtac at least uh like the hotel the elevator rides in the hotel are always my favorite because oh. it's just like a, such a weird cross section of people and you're like well i mean might as well talk we're all dressed as super weird things right now it's fine and it's funny like staying at one because like the crowd changes so differently between like six and seven and like people start lurking out and you're like oh oh no this is different now uh, there's always, uh, let's see, there's one hallway that me and my friend, like our phones died. And so we're trying to charge mm -hmm. our phones. And it just so happened to be the hallway that like starting at like seven o'clock, every like, I don't know, every person who didn't have a hotel room and wanted to drink a lot decided to pick that hallway. And it just started filling up with people. And we were just two like teens just sitting there so awkward in this incredibly drunk hallway of like 20 somethings. And we we're like, this is, I see to get my phone to 15%. This will be fine. <laughs> I can do another three minutes here. Uh, yeah, it would be nice to get in a hotel in a place like that. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've done that for like basic our percussion conventions which yeah. is always cool because you run into all these percussions i haven't done it for mm -hmm. an anime convention um i wish i would have for my first one but yeah the um bar is one of my favorite places um i'll, I'll only hang out at them a little bit but seeing a bar of cosplayers is just cool and because i usually the only time i actually talk to people is at bars because that's when uh -huh. people talk to me because i don't start conversations oh um, yeah I, and, yeah i feel that <laughs> That's always cool. The reason I didn't for the first one is because I had a job back and forth uh, mm -hmm. because I had a African, a Ghanaian, Ghanaian African drama ensemble concert that Saturday. So I had to leave. Okay. And I was like, ah, I still want to come back. So I just went right back. Um, any memories from any of your conventions that stick out to you? Um. <laughs> Well, my friend, okay, so I've always gone with my friend Lydia. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice having like a cosplay buddy. So in our, in like our group, we don't have, we only have to be like half of a person when we go outside. Like each of us only have to talk sometimes and then we just always stay by each other and it works out fine. But no matter what she's dressed as, no matter who she's with, no matter anything, she always gets hit on in like such an abrasive and awkward way or like yelled at in an awkward way. Like she was, uh, she was Deku from My Hero Academia oh. and like she just had people like randomly insulting her as if she was like the character and she was like, okay, but like, don't yell at me, please. I'm, I am just a child. Um, oh gosh. The weirdest thing that happened, so we make fun of her, well, gosh, I was gonna say boyfriend, but it's her husband now, constantly for this. Um, so he, he'll come to conventions and stuff with us and he like got tired. So he went back to the room to take a nap in like the middle of the day. And he was like, oh, you know, watch out on her, make sure nothing happens. It was like noon, right? So it's like a Saturday. It's like straight up 12, 15 in the afternoon. So we were like in the in the courtyard full, just full of people. It was a academia like cosplay shoot. Oh. And this guy just wobbles his way up to her. She's dressed like a teenage boy because she's dressed as Deku. He like wobbles his way up to her. He's holding a full bottle of something. It's got like this much left in it. He takes this giant swig of it and then just like yells <laughs> a pickup line at her. And like me and another friend were by her and just kind of like, pull her back and then like move away from the guy it was so awkward 
usually you don't see that though like usually people are really cool yeah. but there's always at least some really really weird guy who hits on her no matter what like what she is which is just hmm. a talent yeah i guess i've never maybe i'm not paying attention but i've never seen anything like that ever happen i've never seen really any kind of negativity act of interest in. i'm sure it's there but i'm usually yeah. probably in my own world yeah i usually i mean i usually don't either all the people like we meet are usually cool but just it's just people hitting on her at least once a convention always yeah. one weird <laughs> uh, actually i have another one from another year um cool. the i guess like the only time i feel like super awkward at conventions is like so usually you know if you don't know somebody's name and you just like see somebody across and you want to say hey you look cool or something you'll just call up a character name because it's I mean, you don't it's all you know these people usually so that's not weird but we had um it was actually it was the year i was ramona because we were both blue haired ladies and she was aqua from kingdom hearts and um like five minutes in the door this guy just like walks up to her and was like aqua can I get a picture with you? And we're like, you know, that happens. That's fine. Like, honestly, it's really flattering when someone like wants a picture of your cosplay. And then he like is still talking to us afterwards. And he just starts talking about how, how great she was in that game and how like, et cetera, et cetera, as if like talking about her as the character. And it was just like, we did not know how to react because it's like, sometimes people, you know, like, do stuff in character but sometimes you're just a person and most times you're just a person in a costume so he starts talking about you know all the things she achieved and you know mm. fighting that enemy and she was like ha 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 it was so adorable <laughs> oh oh but yeah usually people are really cool even like I can handle awkward awkward's fine it just catches me off sometimes and I don't know how to react to it yeah Ooh. those are some of my favorite uh interactions we've had yeah i've never besides from those couple i've said about the panels i don't talk that much with other people in conventions i usually stick in like i said in my own world mm -hmm. uh mainly because i'm just enjoying everything i'm seeing i get caught up in just whatever i want and kind of ignore the fact that there are other people around me uh, oh, yeah. but then there are people i'm like oh that's cool uh, and then it's like oh it'd be cool to have a picture that or with them and then like no that's weird i'm a weird and i'm that it'll be awkward i'm not going to do that and then that's where that usually stops but yeah. that's um the most awkward thing i did was uh the impact they had uh like a some kind of dance or some kind of a little formalish cosplay dance or whatever and i went into that um i was in there for like maybe five minutes after waiting who knows how long Mm -hmm. And then um, they cleared the dance floor and it was like, somebody made an excuse for that they lost something or whatever. And then I got to see uh, two people propose and that was cool. Oh. And then I was like, well, I'm just going to stand here awkwardly, didn't talk to anyone, didn't really do anything, stood in there for five minutes and left. And I was like, hey, that was, I didn't know what to do in this situation at all. Yeah yeah but there's a lot of that that's why i like i gotta go with a buddy i'm like i'm a garbage fire on my own like if i get separated from the people i came with i'm just like i panic and they usually find me in like the for some reason there's always one room at a convention that's just constantly playing anime oh. i think it's supposed to be like a break room but they usually just find me in that room just sitting because i don't have to talk to anybody <laughs> I spent time in that room too. It was one of those rooms that got me into Loop in the Third. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorites now. Um, but yeah, I talked about convention, or I talked about Kawaii Con and how big and great that was. But for some reason, I don't have as many like funny slash awkward memories from that one. It was just really cool. <laughs> so, uh, so let's have you, let's talk about the lack of conventions uh like you said you had plans i had plans kawaii con and finally the comic con were supposed to combine and be this huge convention in august and then that didn't happen but mm -hmm. have have you have you been looking at any of the like online convention stuff 
the pants. You know, I I haven't as much. Um, I mostly like there's people I've like met at conventions that I'll still talk to and stuff, but I really love like the building and like the cosplay side of yeah. things. So there's some like cosplayers I'll follow online that it's <laughs> it's wild what like uh what like cosplayers are doing though like I've seen like cosplay like workout sessions which are just whack because how can anyone work out in a wig but like character workout sessions people have done like lots of live streams that have been both cool and really awkward Mm -hmm. uh lots of like tutorials and stuff mostly just lots of animal crossing themed things because no one like Yep. I, there's nothing else to do so yeah I don't know. yeah I haven't followed as much as of the um the online ones because I just like I like being there yeah, you know it doesn't that. feel like it doesn't feel the same if I'm not like awkward and around people <laughs> no yeah I get that um because anime expo like in front of mission con 2020 just happened and mm-hmm. yeah I went through I was trying to get myself really hyped for all this and it, and uh, it helped because I had uh, like a three liter of sake throughout both days. So, but I made my own like little mock anime convention vlog, and that was really funny for me to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just me being dumb. But then it also was like, man, I miss actually being here. And yeah. it's cool that they're still trying to do all this stuff online. But mm-hmm. yeah, it also just kind of makes you miss actually doing it especially when you're big in the cosplay and you can't just walk around and show off all the stuff you made they mm-hmm. you can post pictures and stuff like that but like actually seeing it in person uh is a lot more desirable oh, but yeah, yeah for sure through all these online stuff they, they do a lot of cool panels like there's voice act introduction to like voice acting panels there's oh, like cool. draw alongs there was something I saw with like a uh, Japanese, uh, what do they call it, writing or whatever, and making oh, that yeah. guitar. What is it? Guitar? No. Anyway, calligraphy. Yeah, Japanese ah, calligraphy. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, oh, what other kind of stuff? Then just a bunch of these little cultural things that they had all throughout. And stuff like that was cool. But yeah, being in the panel, as awkward as that is in real life, yeah, it's just, the energy is not there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's whatever. But hopefully they'll come back next year. Because since I, know. I don't think anything else is happening. But I, pretty much all the ones I've seen for still 2020 have gone. Yeah. Have gone online. Even because I know some people were like had because a couple like in the fall and then around like Christmas that people were still hoping might. Oh yeah be happening but i mean i i can't i can't see them allowing allowing that which is such a bummer it is but i mean i get it but you know it's yeah no, you, can like it. It. you can only try to do your best to keep people safe and a whole bunch of people crowded into a building Not a good idea. i mean people I, I've gotten sick pretty much after every convention I've been to anyway, just like mm. the flu, or not the flu, but you know, like a cold or just the, the con gunk, the generic, yeah. you just, ugh, for a couple of days. So I don't even want to imagine what, what COVID would do to a convention. Oh my gosh, that'd be bad. Oh, it would only be that. Um, was, you got a bunch of people who like aren't sleeping or bathing oh, for like true. four days. <laughs> Yeah, the whole, there's always like, the whole, like, stinkingness of conditions for some reason. But I think by now people take a clue and, like, keep yourself clean, but whatever. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens. I know, I'm pretty sure Crunchyroll is supposed to have another online convention, so I'll probably waste another couple of days on that or however long it is, but. Yeah, until then, at least I guess I'll have time to try to make a cosplay of something. I don't yeah. know. I, <laughs> okay, I am definitely one of those people that um, I procrastinate everything. Mm. And um, 
I add, like when I'm making something, I'll add so many unnecessary details that I don't have for like 3 a.m. of the day of something. And um, I have so many supplies. I've got like four, like mm, maybe like three whole like supplies bought for like costumes, like three whole costumes. I have just not been able to get myself to do anything. Cause it's like, I don't have a deadline. I don't have a time where I know I'm gonna wear this. I like, might as well just lay in bed and watch anime. Like I don't, I haven't gotten myself to actually make anything. And let's see, the con I was supposed to make these for was MTAC. So that was like April. Yeah. So it's like, ooh. So I'd like to say I'll have all of these new costumes for next year, but I'll probably still make them like the week of, to be honest. <laughs> but that's part of the fun for me, at least. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I get that. I'm definitely one of those people that is a procrastinator. And if I don't have a deadline, uh, like for something I'm supposed to be doing for school now, I'm mm -hmm. not going to get it done for a while. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. What are some characters you've cosplayed before? Um, okay. So um, I only cosplay so far two kinds of people, and that is um, moderately edgy women and angry. Uh, like angry teenagers. <laughs> so uh, some of my favorites, I've done uh, Coraline from Coraline, mm -hmm. then Ramona Flowers from Scott Pilgrim. But my favorites are probably um, Bakugo from My Hero Academia, because yeah. he's just a little rage child. And that's Bakugo so different awesome. from who I am as yeah. a person. It's incredibly fun. And then I got my friend from high school to do uh, Shikamaru and her as Tamari from Naruto. And that was really nostalgic because it's like, I actually did that one last spring and there were, they're still, still in like 2019 and, you know, 2020 if it existed. Uh, so many Naruto cosplayers, which is just hilarious and also awesome because it's just really nostalgic. And you're like, you just look around and we're like, yeah, we're still doing this. Awesome. Go team. But um, those are Bakugo. Bakugo is definitely my favorite just because the personality is so different from me and people kind of ex expect me to be like out there which makes interacting with people a lot easier because I am yeah. I'm really shy I am not good I am not good at talking to people but when you're like a little rage bean you can just you know scream at someone about how well not scream that's rude but you can I you can it. tell someone how cool they look and it just gives you that like that confidence to just like you know I just love I love complimenting people especially if it like they've worked hard or if they're showed up and have a full costume on because even just showing up at all is difficult having any semblance of a full costume on is so difficult so I'm just so proud mm -hmm. but yeah he's he's probably my favorite that I've known. No Vakugo is awesome he's probably definitely my favorite probably definitely Sure. Uh, my character from My Hair Academia, and he's just great. Uh, you, you said, I, I mean, I know you did because I saw pictures of that. You only do the two types, but Shigamaru is an angry boy. He's like the most chill That's in true. Naruto. He still is a teenage boy. <laughs> That's the other type yeah. of person I cosplay. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I know, I guess during that art, um in Shippuden you did Shik Shippuden Shikamaru right mm -hmm. did you do okay yeah I guess he was kind of angry um during that time because of a little, little bit of rage yeah but little feelings yeah. lots of tears oh, yeah very wanted. very sad time in that <laughs> but yeah no I've I've only ever wanted to cosplay I never brought myself around to do it I've always had ideas I wanted to be the first one I was going to do was gold from the pokemon avengers manga oh, that never oh, happened i was really oh. into that then um the other one i wanted to do was gajil from fairy tale and because he's probably my favorite on that too and he's just cool but then that's like that's a lot of work and i would need a lot of stuff i don't know how to do and then i'm like uh if i ever do it i should just keep it simple so me not doing cosplay it's one a lack of like I want to do a character I feel like I would fit into the best and mm -hmm. I, I can't that. it's like hard to pick a character I could do compared to a character I want to do mm -hmm. and then there's also just me being lazy so 
working against all of that is a little tough. And then I was like, maybe I could do something like a lot, uh, not light, L from Death Note. Like, huh. That's pretty simple. It's pretty much pants and a long sleeve watch shirt. That's it. But then like hair and black under eyes, man. Uh, who else? I was trying to think of other stuff. Yeah, pretty much anyone simple I've been trying to look into throw together. But now that I apparently have a lot of time, I will probably try a little bit harder. <laughs> um, how do you usually decide who you're going to cosplay? Honestly, um, it's just whatever. So I like building. Mm -hmm. uh, like crafting is my absolute favorite thing about it. So starting off <laughs> oh god embarrassing i want to say i was younger than i was but i think i was like 17. um the first two people that me and my friend cosplayed went to mtac or her mom dropped us off and picked us up because neither of us had cars so our senior year of high school and um we were what were we into we were into hetalia at the time oh, so yeah. we were female prussia and germany from hetalia no one knew who we were and it was fine, but um, so that one we picked just cause like, it was one of those we'd always wanted to go to a convention. We were watching a lot of Hitalia and we were like, we had decided like our personalities were really similar to those two. So we'd like joke about them. And we were like, haha, wouldn't it be funny if we went to a convention and wore them? And then we did. Um, cool. But since then I like, I've gotten really into the building aspect I love I haven't done a lot of like large scale props I really want to do a full armor build but mm. I mostly pick um if they have like an accessory I want to make or if it's a character that's important to me so like Coraline and Ramona were both like really important characters to me I really liked the media I really liked um I thought they were cool and they both had costumes that like I was in college it was really easy to goodwill most of their stuff yeah um, for Bakugo, the only version of him that I've done, I actually, I, I'll talk about this later if you want, but I was asked to be um, in an, a role play panel as him, oh. which was an experience. But um, yeah, we would definitely talk about that. <laughs> actually, I've been in, I've been in two, and they've both been experiences. But um, but for him, it was the fan art of not the fan art, the official art of. Um, when they were doing the like character popularity polls and mm. so you remember the intro that was like they were all in like the different fantasy kind of like rpg oh yeah look and stuff yeah so what was his like tribal look and he had that really dope necklace and i was just like i want to make that so i just basically talked to two of my friends i was like hey um i want to do the i want to do the fantasy bakugo uh you should do Deku and Ochako. And they were like, okay. So we uh, we got together and we like worked on the props, like her staff and the different stuff together. And then I built um, I built a lot of the uh, the props. My <laughs> my friend was in school uh, for uh, like theater, so she knew a lot more about like costuming. So she helped us a lot with the costuming. I did a lot of the props, and my other friend was really good with hair and makeup. So we we're kind of our own little like troop. So I've never done my own wig. I like, I get so many compliments on wigs and stuff. I have never done my own wig. I always pay my friend to do it because she's so much better or we're like barter. I'll be like, I'll build you a bracer if you make me a wig. So it like, it, it's, it's kind of fun working out for that. But yeah, usually I'll just pick really fun. Like if there's a certain item I want to make and then I'll, build the character around that mm, gotcha. so yeah cool uh have there been any cosplays that you've seen that just you thought were outstanding or just like thought were the best you've ever seen oh man i i follow so many online that make me want to like cry mm. <laughs> they're just so beautiful but um i i love armor builds I'm really impressed by armor builds and I'm really impressed by, um, I'm, I'm like really just uh, so impressed by like functionality. Like mm -hmm. if you can make something and then I can also see you walk in it, it's like, whoa, that's up like 5,000% because so much stuff you have to stand like at a certain angle and then not breathe and maybe it'll stay on you. But, um, oh, I'm blinking on the name. 
uh, which makes me feel quite silly. But um, the little brother in Full Metal Alchemist, you know what I'm talking oh, about? Yeah, yeah. Ow. Armor. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ow. Uh, there's a guy at MTAC that I've seen pretty much every year I've gone that has like a full, Damn. like a full metal suit. And it's oh. great. Like you can't wear it that much because obviously it's really, really warm. Yeah. But that's like a, that's why I like going to like a, a local convention and then like a couple of years because they'll be like kind of fan favorites or like you'll mm-hmm. see, you know, repeated costumes or people like, you know, build up off of the same costume. But he'll like walk in the door and make it like five feet inside the door before he's just stopped for pictures for like 20 oh. minutes. <laughs> but that one is one of the best ones I've seen like in person but um but yeah i just armor builds Ugh, armor builds are so beautiful especially when people will add like moving parts or like lights and all that nonsense it's like oh that's so cool i want to make it but it's expensive but it's so cool i love looking up, looking up stuff like that <laughs> oh man yeah people are just ridiculously uh talented and put a lot of work into this kind of stuff oh yeah uh, some of the it's best crazy. ones i've seen have been um sui from my hair academia is that it okay it's yeah fun. yeah it's, look i guess it helped because this was like just um the she was short anyway but mm-hmm. she looked just like her like every detail i, I even like pulled a picture up just to compare and i was like wow the amount of detail and just like mm-hmm. it, if like she popped out of the anime this person was uh her and then another one what was her name the little, little sister from demon slayer um same thing looked exactly like her not only mm-hmm. that she, we, she was sitting like right like up a seat and a couple over from me in a panel and the entire time in the panel she like kept the little thing in her mouth <laughs> Uh-huh. Like how it was like an hour long. It was one of the bigger ones. And I don't remember seeing her like actually take it out the entire time. It's like that is oh, yeah. dedication. That's commitment. Yeah. That's I definitely like, commitment. I would not do that. I would only do something like that for like a picture and keep the rest like uh-huh. as comfortable as I can. Have wearing an entire suit, um, metal suit. I don't know, you said he would get like five feet into the door and then get uh, ambushed for pictures. I wouldn't mm-hmm. even make it through the door before I had to get out of the thing. It's, I, yeah. I don't like the heat. Yeah. And that's, um, <laughs> I have been very lucky and um, the weather has just agreed with whatever costumes I've done. So like two years ago at MTAC, um, it was so hot. And that's when I did the fantasy Bakugo, which is basically like shirtless, but for me it was a binder mm. and um, and like some jeans. And so I was just like, my friends were like so warm. They had so many layers on. I was just like, I love this breeze. This is great. So like that worked out for me. And then last year it was super stormy, like the entire time. And it was very cold for uh, for spring. And I had like, you know, like Shikamaru vest and sleeves and pants. So I've just like, I've been really lucky with the weather. But um, my friend moved out to California a couple of years ago and she's been to like, uh, like Anime Expo and yeah. LA Comic Con and stuff. And it's, I love, um, I, I ghost a lot of cosplayers at like conventions and stuff through their stories. And it's, <laughs> it's so funny to me because someone will be like yeah I'm bringing this build um I'll probably last about 20 minutes and I'll sweat it off and have to go change into something else because I just like oh man yeah yeah it gets hot definitely uh that affects how long you can stay in something uh that's why it's nice having like a hotel or like a place you can escape to because you can like you can bring out that thing that's really cool and then people can compliment you on it and they can go change <laughs> you just gotta like debut i'm warm i'm gonna leave now and that's pretty fun whenever you make your stuff do you normally um prioritize comfort or detail um <laughs> i'm kind of a garbage fire i try to do comfort um i'm really big about uh 
stuff looking like uh looking like canon or looking like official like mm -hmm. i will put so many so much unnecessary detail into stuff that really like no one's gonna see actually um so okay so you can't really see it but this is like the same as the uh, the fantasy bakugo look um so that's uh phil mizuno which is a really cool Canadian oh. cosplayer yeah he was and, um i watched a panel with him with yeah. uh, uh on. i've met him twice i want to say and he's so nice he's so nice in real life he's just <laughs> genuinely a really a really sweet guy who's just like in his 30s and likes anime and it's just really wholesome 30. but um yeah he's older yeah. than your general like general which is really nice because usually yeah. you're like oh no i'm like because i'm about to be 24 and it's like ah no i'm 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 hitting the over the anime hill <laughs> like i can't you know be but you know you can be older that's fine oh, yeah, that's no, fine i'm sure there's a lot of older uh cosplayers especially because they're in costumes you can't tell how old most people are yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah costumes Han. are expensive so the oh, better yeah. ones are usually older because you have a job and you can afford it <laughs> oh. oh definitely but yeah yaya -Ya han she was i think i'm saying her name right she was one of the first cosplayers i know because of here's mm -hmm. a cosplay and stuff like that she nice. was in the panel with him and then i was didn't realize she's like 40 and really oh that's looked, crazy as, that's awesome almost as young as us i guess i don't know but yeah but yeah cosplaying i guess can keep you young because yeah. you're in a costume i guess you're so. yeah you keep pretending to be young maybe it'll stick you at least know a lot of good makeup techniques and stuff yeah, to look young true. so you know how to you know what the kids are into because you still keep it up with anime uh oh yeah but so the costume he's wearing in that one was actually like the props and the different stuff were made by a guy named lawrence iwood he was one of my favorite prop builders. Oh, he's so good. He has his own workshop and stuff. But um, I so I like modeled the, um, there's like a bracer and then there's like a, a pauldron and then there's a couple of knee pads, but I like kind of modeled my look after the one that I, I had seen him build. Mm. And I <laughs> stayed up too late. I finished it like the day of, which is standard for me. So I'm not even surprised. But I was just, I really wanted to do a good job on the costume because this is actually where I got this prank. So I knew he would be there and he had like worn Lawrence's uh, look before. And so I like really like wanted to do a good job on it. So I was excited about meeting him. And in like the, in like the arm piece, it's like supposed to be like leather at one point. I made it all out of um, gluing together sheets of that multicolored like craft foam. You know what I'm talking about? Because yeah. I didn't even get like actual good like EVA foam I just used I just glued a lot of craft foam together and then like sanded it down and I spent like I already was running low on time super unnecessary but then I spent like an extra like 45 minutes um I had my like Dremel sanding tool just my baby I love it but of like doing little slots and little like holes in the uh the leather part to make it look like it was actually leather worked and all this kind of stuff and it was like this tiny detail that I didn't need to do. But then when we actually went and met him at the con, like he had a booth set up um, at one point, uh, we were all dressed as academia stuff and he was in like a casual uh, Bakugo, I want to say, because that's one that he cosplays a lot. But um, he was like looking at my stuff and he was like, oh, you, you made that? And I was like, oh, what? Yeah, of course I did. And he was like looking at the thing and he was like, asking how I did the little like leather leather drill and all that kind of stuff that like one detail I didn't think anyone noticed he literally was asking me about how I made it and I was just like oh oh bless so that's like I was just a really good moment that's like mm -hmm. what it is for me I love making stuff and then seeing other people make stuff and then geeking out and talking to them about their techniques for making it so I really like I don't think I answered your question at all. I really like functionality. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, I got it. <laughs> because I want to be able to like wear something, I want it to be able to fit, I want it to be able to seem like, like I can walk around in it. And I've done a couple of commissions for people for some like accessory and prop pieces yeah. and just like use different techniques and like learning to remake stuff if it doesn't, uh, doesn't sit right and to try different like, clasps or different glues or different like techniques and stuff so that it fits them better is my favorite thing to do hmm. like magnets man i love magnets so much magnets hot glue and sandpaper 
I mean, I could use other stuff besides that, but those three are just uh, everything to me. Yeah, stick to what you like. I get it. Yeah. But yeah, um, one more thing. Whenever I saw Phil on that panel, uh, yeah, I instantly liked him mainly because he was doing a um, Claude cosplay from Fire Emblem mm. Three Houses. So mm-hmm. that is anything Fire Emblem is easy to win me over with. <laughs> I think I actually, I think I, he posted that on like a picture of that cosplay just on Instagram before I got on here. And I was just like, wow, he finally did Claude. But anyway, sorry, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> no, no. No, so yeah, that's good with him. So uh, going back to the reason I don't make cosplay stuff, uh, one of my excuses I like to tell myself is because if I try to make something, I want it to be like really good, really detailed and fit um, the character. I want to, actually resemble the character um but i know that's not going to happen so that's why i keep telling myself i'm not doing it just you know excuses but you know people still uh make their own cosplays of course you know it's all about having fun it's all about playing oh yeah um, for sure and but if uh there's other people like me who um don't want to cosplay because they feel like their costume wouldn't be good enough do you have any little message or advice to get people to feel comfortable with making cosplay and doing their own stuff yeah totally so like again i i started cosplaying and well started the strong word i first cosplayed in 2014 uh it was tragic most of it was from goodwill um I tried to cut my own bangs for my wig and it was really awful. <laughs> it was just lots of things about it weren't great. And like a lot of people have their like first costume story when they're like, you know, it's it, like in middle school or in junior high and it, like, you're like, oh yeah, you're in middle school or junior high. Yeah. Of course you look like a hot mess, but like people are a little bit, um, it's a little bit harder to like start cosplay when you are older. Cause you feel like, oh no, I'm not a child. I don't have an excuse if I don't look perfect. Ah, or like, uh, what if my coworkers see me, you know, what if my family judges me, et cetera, et cetera. But it really is like the whole thing for me has been just such a fun confidence thing. Um, like I really hated how I looked for most of my life. And, um, I would always like hide under like really baggy clothes and would hide under like I didn't really wear makeup or I wore too much makeup or I just, you know, I I didn't really know how to like present myself and stuff. And cosplay has just been such a fun thing for me to try different looks, Mm. to try like dressing as a guy or dressing super out of character for me, or like, you know, I get to make something and then do it. And for me, the whole process is just like, I love, I love seeing, finding something cool, like a character calling up my friends being like I want to make this will you guys be this thing with me and then we all work on it and then we all get to be that thing together and usually it's like because we did like the the great fairies from uh, breath of the wild it's like I finished it in the hotel room I left my elf ears at home like somebody else forgot their contacts our heels hurt too much so we can only be it for like an hour but it was just that like we still talk about it because it was just that making something together and then getting to be together and wear it. So it's just, it's finding what you want to do. Cause like, you don't have to dress up. That's fine. You can just go, you can go to panels. You can just enjoy other people's costumes and what they, they made. Um, there's a really big trend in like um, doing like casual versions of things or like, um, like low key versions of things that are just comfortable to wear around. Um, there's a lot of stigma with like making your own costume from scratch, which nobody does that. That's garbage. Even people who are like professional, like they get their wigs made, they get their costumes made. Like usually people have at least one thing they like to do. Like I'm always going to build my props because I enjoy it. And that's my favorite thing. Mm. I feel no shame. And like, if I want to buy a part of a costume or if I want to buy my wig, I always pay other people to do my wigs for me because I've tried and I'm really bad at it oh. and I don't want to spend that time on it because it's not something I enjoy so like if you really want to like make something from scratch there's so many tutorials on like YouTube there's a lot of like cheap supplies you can do for like starting off like my my first things I made were craft foam and hot glue no I didn't even have a hot glue gun 
I had a glue stick <laughs> and I had um, some scissors and some like 99 cent paint. So like, it doesn't have to be amazing. You just like find what you like about it and do that thing. Yeah. That makes sense. Oh, I got you. I think I rambled. No, but I hope that was great. okay. No, you said plenty and then more. It was good. Yeah, pretty much um, if I was to add anything, try and convince myself, anybody else listening, you got to start somewhere. And you won't know how that's going to turn out until you do it. Everyone starts somewhere. I mean, that's uh, eight months ago, I decided to start a YouTube channel that hardly anyone watches because I wanted to do it. I had to start sometime because I kept being like, ah, oh, it would be so cool to do this. Uh, but then it's like, ah, oh, nah, Personally, I really want to do this. Be like, oh. And that would last a year. It, just do it. If you have something that interests you, whether it be cosplay or whatever, do it. It's not going to hurt anything uh, unless it is to hurt someone. Don't do that. Um, but yeah, are there any uh, characters you've been wanting to cosplay or you have planned to cosplay? Um, I really want to work up, um, I'd like done him before, but I want to fix up, uh, Mista from part five Jojo. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just, just a garbage fire of a boy, but I love him. Oh. And, uh, oh, there was someone else I wanted to do. Oh yeah. Me and my friends are going to do a, a BTS inspired one yeah. that I'm, I'm sewing some, some stuff for, but, um, yeah, mostly I just, I, I have a lot of costumes that I made really quickly that I'm wanting, like, to get supplies to fix up on. Ooh, uh, I love to do, have you seen, like, Kubo and the Two Strings? Maybe? I have not, not yet. It's another, it's another claymation, like, horror mm -hmm. line, but the, yeah. the, uh, there's, like, a samurai beetle in it. That would be really fun to do, because he's got, like, a bunch of bows and a bunch of, like, fun weapons that I want to make, so. That yeah. sounds cool, actually. Yeah, yeah I forgot. Jojo, um, you got me into that show. Uh, yeah, Jojo. We were just talking before like a football game or something mm -hmm. and uh, talking about that. Yeah, you got me into it because there's this whole thing. People think it's weird. and it, I mean, it's kind of weird, but it's not like as bizarre as the title says. It's, mm -hmm. oh, it's so good. <laughs> and like, it's so good. Yeah, this definitely something everyone needs to like check out. Don't look at all the weird memes people make. It's not really anything like that for the most part. But uh. it's a garbage fire and I love it. Like my real quick on Jojo now that you brought Jojo up. I guess I brought Jojo up, but I'm gonna still talk about Jojo. Yeah, go for it. So um I have I've only watched up through the anime, so I haven't read on mm, like yeah, part yeah. six, seven, or eight. But I have friends, uh, because my college friends got me into Jojo and um because it would just always be on when I was at their apartment. I'm like, I guess I'm watching this now. Um, but I've seen I've seen all the anime now. And that show is amazing because yeah. you can literally say any spoiler from any part you haven't seen. And it does not even matter because it's usually something so outlandish. It's like, like literally they'll be like, oh yeah, in part seven, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, probably <laughs> i could see that happening it's still gonna be a wild ride to watch it happen though it's just oh so good everyone's buff the moms are buff the babies are buff the teenagers are buff it's great yeah. <laughs> love it what's your favorite um art from Georgia? i really love part four and five gotcha. i love like i love my boy joseph mm. Oh yeah, love my boy, but I just the side characters in four and five are so oh, yeah. freaking good. Like I, I tend to like navigate towards the like one brain cell dumbasses. So like I'm, I really love Okiyasu. I really love Nista. <laughs> They're such good boys. Uh, idiots, but I love them. Oh yeah, no, my favorite is Joseph. Now, I, I, now, now that you mentioned it, I do realize. Parts one and two really does just focus on Jonathan and Joseph. It doesn't really focus on any other, except for battle tendencies mm -hmm. with Joseph. Uh, what was it? Caesar? Is that his name? The, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was, he was in there. That was sad. But yeah, I don't know. I just really like Joseph and his whole character. And mm -hmm. like the whole 
the way they fought with that kind of stuff, it was still more like others shown and stuff. I just mm-hmm. like the whole, I always forget, uh, Harmon, Harmon. Um, but yeah, when the stands came, Hannah, yeah. um, it was, uh, it was different for me, but it's cool. They do a lot of cool stuff with that. Yeah. People have usually like, if you can get someone to start Jojo, they can usually be like, okay, Hammond, the sun, I got this. But then when it switches to stands, people are like, oh, I don't know, man, this is different. But if you can just like make it, yeah. if you could just make it like a couple of episodes into stands or like a season into stand, yeah. you're like, okay, okay, I got this. So it's good, good, good. Yeah. All right. So um, let's do, that That was great. A lot of co- uh, convention and cosplay stuff. So, so before we wrap up, what kind of anime slash any other stuff do you watch and read and or whatnot? God, I've been during quarantine. I've honestly just been like rewatching, like catching up on shows. Like I, I'm waiting to watch the finale with my brother, but I like rewatched through all of Adventure Time. I rewatched through like all of Steven Universe. Um, I've been watching a lot of like. Korean and Thai dramas so I haven't been watching as much anime during uh during that but the ones I'm probably gonna pick up on soon um I really need to watch uh Demon Slayer oh yeah I've heard good things about that I need to watch um Beastars oh yeah and there's one more one more that's on my list it's not an anime but no I think it's I don't know what you'd consider it, but I need to watch she I've been told I need to watch that as well, but yeah. I don't know. I think Demon Slayer is the next, like, anime I'm probably gonna yeah, Demon catch Slayer up on. Yeah. Um, do, no, I'm the same kind of, I'm the same as you, kind of. I've been re-watching a lot of stuff, not even anything animated or uh, or anime. I've... <laughs> I've rewatched. Well, I rewatched the Magicians on time, so I can't use that excuse. But uh, just older shows I watched like long time ago. Whenever I mm-hmm. pretty much whenever I first got like Netflix or Hulu, those shows mm-hmm. I first watched then. I'm rewatching again now. But I, yeah, I've been doing a lot more reading than watching anime. Really, I didn't catch up from the fall season of anime. Uh, until like a few weeks ago because I've just been putting it off. I've been watching the new episodes and then I'll go back and try to catch up on all kinds of new older anime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, anime wise though, I just finished the ReZero director's cut just in time mm-hmm. for the second season to start today. And then what else have I been watching? Uh, I, pre- I pretty much try to watch as much as I can, but I also don't really watch. I end up not actually watching or paying that much attention to what I'm watching. I don't, I end up not having anything that stands out to me, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. I watch a lot, but then there's only so much that I'm like, oh yeah, this was actually great. Um, but yeah, okay. the new anime season for the summer is starting this week. And so far, ReZero sticks out. What else has came back? And then a bunch of the continuing series have stuck out. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Besides that. Yeah, it feels weird watching new things this year. Yeah. It almost feels like just write it off. Just keep watching old things that are safe that you know. Yeah. <laughs> like watching new content right now is just so funny to me because I like it's just I don't feel like I've done anything or anything has changed. So it's weird that something new can exist. Yeah, especially Oof. with like all these denial. Delays. everything yeah. is getting delayed. So Yeah. I guess going back to what we know is there is our default. I don't know. Safe. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, um, any any anime you would recommend then for other people? Um, One Punch Man. Oh yeah, that's a good one. I haven't caught up with it at all. Oh, really? I haven't caught, no, but I love it and I'm going to, but that one's just so good for like, if you're tired of like 800 episode like shonens or like drama or things just being too heavy, just watch One Punch Man, be happy. It's got good action. It is. Ugh. And all the people they bring in on the second season, oh, mm-hmm. they're great. Uh, but yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, you catch up on One Punch Man. It is awesome. Yeah. It's, it's the mission. Yeah. Um, same. I mean, same creators, but Mob Psycho 100 is a great anime. Right. Thank you. Okay. I've been. Okay. I, that's the other one I was trying to think of earlier. Yes. For like a year now, my friend has been like, have you watched Mob Psycho yet? And I haven't, so I should do that too. It still has some of the silliness as One Punch Man, but Mm -hmm. it is not as lighthearted. There's still other, it gets a little deep at some point, Mm -hmm. but now it's so good. And the animation of it is just fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Also, it has like one of my favorite openings. So just because of the music. But yeah, no, if I was... Yeah, Mob Psycho 100. Of course, we talked to them about a lot, but if you haven't watched JoJo, if you haven't watched My Hero Academia, uh, do it. If you somehow <laughs> didn't watch any of Naruto, I don't know how. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard for me to recommend Naruto to people. Yeah, Naruto. I can like recommend Naruto with like a filler guide, but like I went through and like watched it, but I was like, it was like a summer. And I like, I hadn't seen all the way through it. So I just like laid down and then just did my summer reset by just watching Naruto (laughs) that whole summer. But um, it's a lot. It's a big commitment. It is. Like you only, my theory is like you have at least one really, really long anime that you've seen all the way through. Like for my friends, Lydia and Adam, she's seen all of One Piece, which is quite the commitment. And he's seen all of Bleach. And it's like they haven't seen all of like Naruto or all of like the other one, but like you've got the one mm-hmm. that you like kind of watch as a kid and then you kept up with and it's like really sentimental. But sitting just sitting down and watching like anything over like three hundred episodes is just oof, Yeah. That's a commitment. <laughs> sure is. I've been since I was in high school, I've been trying to catch up on the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. Not even okay. get into Yu-Gi-Oh anymore. It's just uh-huh. I started it in high school and I feel obligated to watch it for the rest of my life now, apparently. And I'm I... like seasons and like hundreds of episodes behind. I'm <laughs> like, I don't think I'm ever going to catch up. I was kind of convinced that Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, like the the first, like um, the one that was on like, you know, Four Kids as mm-hmm. when I was a child, um, was like a fever dream that I had. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Because I like, I remembered bits and pieces of it, but I'm like, did that exist? Or did I make that up? Because <laughs> I just had like vague Yu Gi Oh memories from being like seven. But yeah, it's a trip. It is. Uh, but okay. But yeah, that's probably going to be the end of this for now. But um, thank you so much for agreeing to do this podcast with me. Yeah, I'm so glad this was you fun. did. Good. thanks for thinking of me <laughs> yeah i know of course because um i mean i don't stay in constant contact with you but anytime there's something convention related or especially jojo related anything along those lines i always try to shoot you a text or something either to see your reaction or opinion of it so yeah no i was definitely thinking with all this convention stuff going on i was like i definitely hope you will be on here and you did so I'm, yeah uh, what else am i doing i'm just gonna play more animal crossing so yeah. this was fun <laughs> um is there anything you want to plug like instagram or anything um yeah uh my instagram that hopefully i'm gonna actually start updating again if i can get motivation is the bright whale so like b-r-i-g-h-t and then w-h-a-l-e like a whale so yeah are you still me. doing commission stuff um, I'm thinking I need to kind of like clean my room so I have desk space okay. again. <laughs> but I have all the supplies and I remember how to do stuff. So I'm I'm hoping to get get some commissions and I'm hoping to also start selling some like anime themed jewelry that oh. I've done a little bit in the past. But again, just need to clean my desk <laughs> so I actually have a a surface to work on. Oh, <laughs> quarantine's hard. Yeah, it's been a weird one these past few months. For sure. Oh, but yeah, um, if you want to find more about me, anybody still listening, um, you can find me on YouTube by my Facebook and my Twitter is all the AC stories, all one word. Um, if you want to follow my Instagram, it's the underscore AC underscore stories. Yeah, you can find me on all of that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, but. 
go ahead and check out more of this podcast too, either my old stuff or keep a lookout. Um, if you're watching it now, you probably know where to find it, but it's on my YouTube. It's on all kinds uh, of podcast platforms. But thanks again so much to Caroline for joining me on this. It's been so great to talk again. But until next time, I'm the AC and, <laughs> and bye.